November 2020, China launched 16 artificial rain enhancement rockets in the back of a pickup truck 300 miles south of Beijing. The operation, ordered up by the Jue County Meteorological Bureau in response to a local drought, was reportedly a success. Over the next 24 hours, the county received more than 2 inches of rain that, according to local officials, alleviated the drought, lowered the risk of forest fires and improved air quality. It sounds like something out of a cartoon. But for decades, China has been home to one of the world's most advanced weather modification programs. Generally, its goals have been modest. More rain in arid places, less field destroying hail and sunny days for big national events. But that modesty is starting to give way. On early December 2020, China announced plans to expand its rainmaking capabilities to cover nearly 60% of the country by 2025, which is about to cover area larger than India. Details are sketchy, but fears are rising about the potential military uses of these capabilities and their effects on an already changing climate. For China and the world, these concerns need to be addressed soon. Humans have dreamed of controlling the weather for millennia. But it wasn't until 1946 that scientists at General Electric Co. discovered that dry ice can create precipitation when it interacts with clouds under certain conditions. In the 1980s, the Chinese government began making substantial investments in cloud physics and related fields. Advances in everything from satellites to rocketry boosted the effort, even though definitive scientific proof for the effectiveness of cloud seeding emerged only in 2018. Nonetheless, the government claimed a great success in 2008, when Beijing launched 1,110 allegedly rain-suppressing rockets to ensure that the Olympic opening ceremonies were dry, although scientists have questioned whether the rockets had much to do with it. By 2015, there were rain-making and hail suppression programs in 30 Chinese provinces, employing some 35,000 people. Success has bred greater ambitions. In 2017, China's top economic policy-making body showered $175 million on a weather modification system designed to bring more precipitation to a region that makes up about 10% of the country's territory. A year later, Chinese aerospace and defense companies were reportedly building thousands of fuel-burning chambers intended to produce vast amounts of precipitation along the Alaska-sized Tibetan Plateau. But as the US learned decades ago, even modest success at weather modification is sufficient to worry rivals and neighbors. And other Asian countries are increasingly concerned that China's program could negatively affect the monsoons and regular rains that have fed their people for millennia. Although the science behind such schemes is still debatable, this isn't an idle worry. In a region where tensions are already rising over access to water, weather modification will at best appear like diplomatic pressure, at worst, it looks like a weapon.